This mandatory training video is provided as an overview of Eagle Prime's basic operational functionality and procedures for candidates who have registered to pilot. If you have not registered, you can do so at the URL in the description of this video. Eagle Prime is a 16-foot-tall, 15-ton Mark III-class armored fighting robot manufactured by Megabots Incorporated and engineered for sustained melee combat. She's powered by a General Motors LS3 V8 engine coupled to three axially mated variable displacement hydraulic piston pumps. These pumps are capable of producing over 140 gallons per minute at 4,000 PSI. The fluid power generated is diverted to over 20 hydraulic actuators through a multitude of Parker Hannafin high flow valves, each directing up to 24 gallons per minute with an impressive 300 hertz cutoff frequency. All of these systems communicate seamlessly over an EtherCAT field bus, allowing for real-time control and monitoring of Eagle Prime through a Linux-based operating system. Eagle Prime's crew consists of two pilots, the gunner and the driver. The driver sits in the back and controls the tracks, legs, power plant, and other low-level functions. The driver maintains situational awareness with externally mounted cameras and relies heavily on the gunner for direction. The gunner sits up front and uses the two joysticks to control each of the arms while using the foot pedals to slew the dorso from side to side. First, we'll review your roles and responsibilities as the driver. After donning appropriate protective clothing and equipment, assume the driver's position by climbing up the left leg and shoulder before descending through the top side hatch. Secure the five-point safety harness, then tighten all straps. After tightening your headset's plug into Eagle Prime's intercom system, a persistent comm channel should be active with your co-pilot. Confirm proper operation by querying the co-pilot and using the push to talk button to query a member of the ground crew as well with the phrase radio check. Radio check, good. The driver is responsible for all actuation below the waist. Though the driver is capable of assuming control of all actuators in the absence of a gunner, that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Above the driver's head and to the left is the engine control panel, or ECP. This panel is used to start and stop the engine, assume manual control of the throttle, and pressurize the hydraulic system. Above the driver's head and to the right is the main power disconnect. This switch disconnects the electrical power cells from both the 12 volt and 24 volt bus for a hard reset or to shut down Eagle Prime completely. At the driver's left hand is the control mode selector. Multiple modes are available for the driver, but this video will cover the most commonly used modes of operation, battle drive mode in two stick and one stick configurations. The central monitor is the forward view. It does not slew with the torso and is always aligned forward with the track base heading. The lower right and lower left monitors provide a view of the right and left track. They allow the pilot to monitor operation of the tracks and ensure clearance when rounding corners or obstacles. The top right monitor displays the rear view, and the left middle status monitor displays the vitals of the power plant and hydraulic systems. A critical duty of the driver is to monitor fluid temperatures during operation. Eagle Prime generates a tremendous amount of heat, and cooling fans alone consume 200 amps at 12 volts. To start the engine, you must first get confirmation from ground control that it is safe to start. Ground control will ask the pilot and gunner to confirm all low, indicating that all toggles and switches in the cockpit are all in the low state, ensuring that Eagle Prime will not move unpredictably when the e-stop is unlatched. Generally, all e-stop switches remain unlatched, except for the wireless held by ground control, until the pilots are ready. After the e-stop is unlatched, the safety strobe will start flashing, indicating that Eagle Prime's power plant and actuation systems have electrical power. To start the engine, first switch primacy to high to assume control of the engine from the ECP. Then switch mode to auto, then depress and release the green button. The engine will crank, catch, and begin idling. The idle is below 1000 RPM, according to the status monitor and the onboard computer will not be in control of the engine and pressurization will not be possible. Pressurizing the hydraulic system is the single most dangerous moment in the operation of Eagle Prime. Pinhole leaks pose an extreme danger to persons on the ground. 
Sudden and unpredictable movement may also occur. Before pressurizing, ensure that the engine coolant sensor reads that the temperature has begun to rise, indicating that the thermostat is functional. After getting clearance from the ground crew to pressurize, go for pressure. Toggle the pressure switch on the ECP to high. Pressurization sequence begins with the engine idle dropping to 700 RPM. The gearbox will then shift from neutral to drive, connecting the output of the LS3 to the hydraulic pumps. The engine will then accelerate to 5500 RPM and begin generating hydraulic flow with no pressure. After a very short pause at 5500 RPM, the bypass valve will close and force pressure into all system lines. The valve will make a loud slamming noise when this happens and will be felt by the crew. If the engine struggles or there is a leak or someone is observed to be too close to the robot, pressurization must be aborted. Do this by toggling the pressure switch to low or, less preferably, by depressing the e-stop, which will require a hard reset of the system. If pressurization is successful, the status monitor will read approximately 4,000 PSI. With system pressure stabilized, use the selector switches to select BDM for battle drive mode, which unlocks maximum valve spool displacement for high flow and thus high speed movement. Set the second selector to two stick or one stick mode. Next to the driver's mode selectors are a series of toggles that open hydraulic lock valves and enable the following systems. Eagle Prime's ankles, knees and legs, tracks, and a currently unimplemented kinematic system feature. Eagle Prime can now move under its own power. The left stick actuates the left track with the Y axis. and leans the ankles side to side with the x-axis. The z-axis of the left stick raises and lowers the legs. Twisting clockwise stands the robot up, while twisting counterclockwise allows it to squat. The y-axis on the right stick actuates the right track forward and backwards. The x-axis for the right stick has no function in two-stick mode. The x-axis of the right hat sways the hips side to side. In one-stick mode, all functions are the same except the right joystick now assumes all directional control of the track drive, while the left stick now only controls the ankles. Pushing forwards or backwards drives the Mark III forwards or backwards, while pushing side to side will pivot the Mark III in place. Pushing into a diagonal will drive the Mark III in a turning arc in that direction. If you forget the function of any of the cockpit controls, refer to your kneeboard reference card. Though the throttle of the Mark III is actively managed by the onboard computer, fast hydraulic movements that create sudden flow demand can strain the engine before the power plant can increase power output. To prevent this, the pilot can adjust the throttle floor in anticipation. Toggle LT3 high. Now use the potentiometer on the ECP to raise the throttle floor to the desired level. Be extremely mindful of overheat conditions while operating in this mode. Now, let's review gunner roles and responsibilities. The gunner has two cameras and the view out of the main windshield to provide visual references. Bear in mind that the view through these cameras lacks depth perception, and as you are maneuvering in three-dimensional space, it can be very difficult to judge the distance of a target or body. It's advised to make use of a combination of the view outside the canopy and the cameras to coordinate and plan your attack. To coordinate, the pilot and gunner communicate with a hands-free intercom for verbal communication. Should you want to communicate with the ground crew, you will need to key the microphone button on top of your headset, wait a beat before speaking, and then conclude your statement or interrogative with over. The gunner is responsible for all weapon systems, arms, and torso slew actuation. As the gunner, you will notice a switch panel next to each of your shoulders that control a number of operating modes and safety lockouts. This video will cover only the most basic functionality of operating the robot's right arm claw and left arm chainsaw.
Once Eagle Prime has progressed through its power-up and pressurization sequence, wait for your driver to confirm pressurization has occurred safely and all systems are nominal. You may now unlock the right and left arms by toggling the R arm safe and L arm safe switches. As the arm systems unlock, they will jostle as the closed loop control systems activate and resolve themselves. Additionally, you will need to switch the left control one switch high to put the chainsaw into task space mode. Eagle Prime software contains an inverse kinematic solver that will automatically calculate joint actuator trajectories to position the end effectors at your desired location. This location is always calculated relative to the forward heading of the cockpit. Once these systems are active, the following control scheme is used to control the arms. Beginning with your right joystick, the x-axis will command the claw of the robot to the right or left. The y-axis will command the claw forwards and backwards. The z-axis will command the claw up and down. To spin the claw, use the right joystick's hat switch x-axis And to open and close the claw, depress the trigger button and move the hat switch up and down. Moving on to your left stick. The x-axis will command the chainsaw of the robot to the right or left. The y-axis will command the chainsaw forwards and backwards. The z-axis will command the chainsaw up and down. To spin the chainsaw, depress the trigger button and move the hat switch up and down. During operation, the robot may achieve the desired end defector position with an undesired arm orientation. Reorienting the arm can be accomplished by toggling the RT1 or LT1 switch high and use the z-axis of the joystick. To unlock the slew drive, enable right control one. This will allow the gunner to slew the torso right with the right pedal and left with the left pedal. Should the robot reach an unusual orientation that is difficult to navigate out of, the robot can be homed back to a neutral position by enabling right control 2 and pressing the RB1 button. This will return the upper half of the robot back to its default stance. After homing is complete, you will need to disable right control 2 to resume control of the robot's upper half. To open the front hatch of the robot, reach forward and pull the two handles to release the hatch latches. You may have to apply pressure to the blast shield with your foot. So that's Eagle Prime. Intelligent, disciplined pilot technique will make this beast do everything but talk. Speed, strength, responsiveness, everything it takes for long, hard fights, and plenty of protective armor besides. Treat it right, and you'll see why the experts call it the best whatever it is, in the world.